I'm on the hunt for a place called Slaughter Gap. It's the place of the battle of the Roundheads and the Cavaliers from 1644 between Heptonstall and Sorbet. Now you might be wondering why I'm wearing a tent on my back. <laughs> well, it's not. It's a poncho. This is what I prefer to wear when it's uh, a little bit nasty outside. And our Fenzel's got her coat on, look. But when it's windy, it can flap about a bit, but it protects my backpack. So that's always a good thing. And it also protects my legs. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on and find Slaughter Gap. I think that one needs a medic. And I've also got some new clobber, including a new tent to show you. So that's exciting, isn't it? Woo! It's windy. Come here. Now I'm pretty sure that that's it down there where these trees are. But it's all fenced off. Let me see if I can find a way down to it. There's also an old Roman settlement over that hill over there. But that'll be a video for another day. And over there, over the top of these mounds over that, that's an old Bronze Age fort. So there's loads of history up here. But I want Slaughter Gap because it's supposed to be haunted. But we'll see. Here we go, look. Could go through the kissing gate, but somebody's left this open bit looks of it. Oh, it's just open all the time. You can see the remnants of old settlements here, like doorways and stuff. I'm wearing some new boots that I've had on a couple of times in the rain. They're supposed to be waterproof, but I can actually feel water in my left, in my left boot already, squelching away. So, can't recommend these. This is a new top that I've got from uh, Rab, I think it is. It's called Vital Hoodie. It's just a bit of a wind block, but it's got a DWR coating on it. Oh, here we go, look. I can see it. Slaughter Gap. And that's where it all happened, down there. Don't know if I'm gonna be at a camp, actually, down in Slaughter Gap, because it's full of sheep and stuff down there. But we'll have a look. They're all onto me already, look. All staring at me. <laughs> and here it is. Slaughter Gap. Might end up being called the Slaughtered Lamb. If I get a bit peckish. So a massive battle went on up here between the Roundheads and the Cavaliers. One of uh, Heptonstall. Well, it was the Battle of Heptonstall, actually. And the others from Sorbe. What I'm gonna do is maybe get a bit higher up, go back up there, get the tent pitched up because I want to be in elements tonight because I'm testing my new budget tent out. Because it's one that I'm gonna be using for winter, hopefully, if it's any good. And like I say, it's a budget one, so let's find out if it's good enough. We've got yellow weather warnings bugger off flies it'll <laughs> come yeah so now i've got to climb back up and i'll tell you the story of slaughter gap once i've got set up i think getting back up here is going to be more like slaughter gap for me <laughs> hey dear 
Come on, let's get up. Power through it, Gaz. This'll do. <sighs> there it is. Like I say, it's a budget tent. What I'm gonna be hopefully using for winter. And you can probably see why I wanna use it for winter, is because it's Maca Massive. It's the uh, Nature Hike Cloud Tunnel 2. Not the Opolis or Opolis or whatever you want to call it. The Cloud Tunnel 2. Anyway, I'm going to get in and get out of this rain. Shall we fend up? Oh wow, it's massive in here. Look at that. Let me get this poncho off. Oh, I'm glad to get out of that. But this tent's massive, look. Look at that. Loads of room. And we've got a massive porch as well. And you can either open this door up, open that door up or open that up, which is pretty cool. Oh, yucky rain. Bad note, but it, haven't we, mate? Should we take your coat off and all? You want this off? <laughs> there we go. When I was setting up tent, Fendi were just running around everywhere trying to find some shelter somewhere behind rocks and that but she gets zipping about everywhere i've got a few lumps and bumps underneath me but nothing in air mattress won't sort out well it's holding so far the wind's pretty strong but i'm liking it it's got a couple of pockets at the front one at each side hanging loop up here for your for your torch Both my socks are wet through, so these racks, trainers that I got from AliExpress that said they're waterproof, aren't waterproof. They were waterproof for the first couple of times I used them, but no match for the British weather, I think. You all right, mate? Oh, you're shivering, aren't you? Should we put your coat on? Let's get your little hoodie on, shall we? There you go. Let's get your tootsie through there. Come on. Let's get your other one through. There we go. <laughs> you little hooligan. Ooh. Mwah. I've also got something else for winter. I'll show you them in a bit. It's fairly big in this tent. Look at the big gap you've got between the fly sheet and the... Uh, and the inner. Not sure it's supposed to be like that, but it were hammering it down and, <laughs> and wind were battering me as well. So I just wanted to get it up. <whistles> but I'll, I'll put all gubbins up on screen so you can have a look at it and I'll leave a link for it in description so you can have a look yourself. But we'll see if it survives the night, shall we? With this yellow weather warning of wind and rain. Nature I a pretty decent like, so I can't see anything going wrong with it, unless it's got a defect, but we'll see. The poles seem thicker than usual. They're normally only 8.5 mil, but this, these seem about 9.5. I'll have to check that when I get home. Also says on the website that it's 2.6 kilos, but I weighed it at home and it came to 2.45. That's with all the pegs and guy lines and stuff in it, so that's pretty decent. Got my dry clothes on now because I'm a bit of a sweaty bugger and uh, walking about in rain with waterproofs on it just gets you damp anyway <laughs> no matter what and look at the state of my feet like bloody prunes aren't they
I've had my eye on this tent for a while now. Ever since I saw Gareth and Zoe wild camps, I saw it on their channel. And I thought, ooh, I fancy me a bit of that. <laughs> I used to have the uh, nature hike. Oh, hello, mate. I'm coming to say hello. Shall we bring your stuff over here? Move out way then. Move your little dinghy. There you go. Move up here then. Yeah, I used to have the Nature Hike Opalus 3 tent, which is similar to this, but it's all it's a lot bigger and it was just too big for just for me. So I wanted something that I could take on my own but also take the kids in, if that makes sense. So then I, I sold the Nature Hike Opalus 3 and I bought the Nature Hike Opalus 2. And that was just a little bit too small and he couldn't sit up in it. So, when I saw this on Gareth and Zoe's channel, probably a year ago, I ummed and ahed about whether I should get it or not. And finally did. And I'm happy with it so far. And it's perfect for just these camps when it's absolutely persisting it down. When you're stuck in your tent forever. And also I'll be able to take my kids with it in it. So, win-win in it, mate. Been doing a bit of retail therapy. Been doing a bit of retail therapy. Can't even say it. Been doing a bit of retail therapy of late. <laughs> we got there in end, didn't we? Because as you'll know, I've been ill for about six weeks. And then I've been on holiday to the Lake District for a week in a log cabin. And all it did there were absolutely pee it down. So I took my backpack with me because I was going to sneak off and do a uh, and do a wild camp up there but it just lashed it down for a week i think we got two days where the sun sort of came out a bit and we went um exploring in some caves and stuff like that and went on a boat ride and i thought it's not fair for me to uh, bugger off is it on the only couple of days when it when it was uh when it was nice weather so never got out to do that but i've been buying new clothes these are from decathlon i think they're called sausage jack or whatever you want to call it Salogiak or something i got two pairs of decathlon hiking pants i got them and i got another pair of black ones that are uh, sort of a thinner stretchier material they're stretchy as well i need stretchy ones because i'm a fat knack but i've got my tights on now look i feel like robin hood Hey, look, I've got these. I bought these for winter because I normally take my big um, work socks that I got from Tool Station, but I thought I'd splash out and get myself some down booties. Now they've got like a bit of a a different material on the bottom and uh, elasticated cuffs and stuff, but they pack down a lot smaller and i think these were only i think they were 15 quid i paid for them reason why i haven't bought these before is because they've been like 40 quid and i'm like i am paying 40 quid for a pair of socks basically or slippers should i say so i'll bang them on in a bit i've got my flames creed quilt that i've been pretty happy with i've camped out with that a couple of nights and it's quite warm for me anyway quite warm for summer but it was just a introduction for me to get a quilt and i actually do prefer a quilt to a sleeping bag i normally use a sleeping bag and just unzip it you see and just have it draped over me but the quilt itself is more comfortable if that makes sense um i thought we were going to get drafts and stuff around me but i really don't and i don't even use the pad straps and stuff on it either i'll link everything in the description so you can have a look at it all yourself i bought another tent as well i bought that for a specific reason and that's for when i go back to that lady in white woodland i haven't been back there yet because it's just been like this it's been absolutely smashing it down and i'm not going to be able to do a investigation really am i if it's just 
peeing it down all night. So waiting for better weather for that. And I've got a tent and it just opens up the front um, and you can leave it open with a couple of sticks or some walking poles or whatever. And you can just look out then over at Woodland. So I've got that tent for that. So I will be going back there. I just need it to brighten up a bit. Isn't that nice, mate? <laughs> you little piglet. Wind's definitely picking up now. So it should be a good test for this tent. So, it's story time. The Battle of Sorby Bridge and the fate of Heptonstall. On the 4th of January, 1644, Major Eden marched a force of 600 men from Heptonstall to Sorby, intending to attack the village of Sorby Bridge at the bottom of the hill. The Royalists defended the bridge bravely in hand-to-hand -hand fighting but the bridge and 42 prisoners were taken. Dividing his forces, some of Eden's men demolished Sorby Bridge defences, while the other part, under Captain Farrer, pursued the defeated Royalists as they fled towards Halifax. But Farrer pursued too far and found himself behind enemy lines. Farrer and his men then attempted to go around the northwest of Halifax via Ovenden Woods towards Ludden and Dean, planning to cross Midgley Moor on the way back to Heptonstall. However, it was difficult terrain for the horses, and the parliamentarians were pursued and intercepted by Royalist cavalry from King's Cross. Farrer decided to make a stand, and fighting occurred on the slope between Hunter Hill and Mixenden Brook at a place in Bin's Hole Clough known as Slaughter Gap. Approximately a hundred men were involved in the combat and eventually the Royalists prevailed, taking ten prisoners including Captain Farrer. Those of Farrer's soldiers who evaded capture fled to the safety of Heptonstall while Farrer and the other captured men were imprisoned in Halifax. At Halifax, two of Farrer's captured men were recognised as being deserters from Mackworth's army. They were quickly condemned to death and hanged at the gallows erected near the Halifax gibbet. Two more of the captured soldiers died from their wounds at Halifax over the following days. On the 9th of January, Sir Francis Mackworth led a force of more than 2,000 men to punish the parliamentarians garrisoned at Heptonstall. Vastly outnumbered, Eden realised that retreat was the only possibility, so he abandoned Heptonstall and retreated towards Lancashire. His route would have taken him through Blackshaw Head across the Long Causeway and over the moors until they reached Burnley and Colne. Eden and his troops were given new orders to rejoin Thomas Fairfax's main army. Meanwhile, the Royalists marched unopposed from Hebden Bridge into Heptonstall. On the 28th of January 1644, after seven months of bitter fighting in the area, Mackworth was ordered to completely abandon Halifax as his force was urgently needed to help oppose the advance of Thomas Fairfax and Oliver Cromwell. So, that's what happened in the Civil War and at Slaughter Gap. Hope you like that little story. And I think it's bedtime for us now. Isn't it, mate? She's already snoozing. Anyway, good night. Finding it a little hard to get to sleep in this wind. Definitely getting battered. I mean, look at it. Jesus Christ. Right.
Christ, man. Woo! Don't you just love it, eh? Might have to go out and uh, check on guy lines. I'm not looking forward to that, though. The tent is well and truly getting battered, isn't it, mate? Just hope it sur survives its first night, because it's quite a tall tent. Not looking forward to going out and uh, checking the guy lines and stuff. But sometimes you got to, you've got to do these sort of things. <laughs> Right, let's put me uh, damp clothes back on and go have a look. I think that should do it. It's not as bad at the moment, but when the wind hits it here, it proper slaps against the uh, against the inner, and it sounds like someone smashing tent. You know, slapping it. Twinkly lights are coming out. Right there. You're coming out for a look. They're coming out for a pee pee. Yeah. <laughs> Have a pee then. Right, I'm getting back in. The good thing about this tent is there's enough room to get changed in it. Woo. Right, you don't want to see me boobies, do you? <laughs> Cold out there, isn't it, mate? Eh? Middle of summer, you wouldn't think we'd need puffer jackets and stuff, would you? Down booties. I've managed to fashion a washing line of sorts. That's on one of the toggles, me waterproof jacket. Me hat's up there. And uh, Fendi's waterproofs. Hanging up on there. Get out in nature, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Something like there. While that's boiling up, I'll tell you what I was watching the other day that uh, really, really made me laugh. Some uh, French beatboxers. I don't know if you've seen them, but. Is that boiling already? It's not far off. Anyway, I'll play you a clip. Absolutely brilliant.
naughty, isn't it? Ouch. Shouldn't do that. Ouch. <laughs> what an idiot I am. Ooh. Right, stay there. Shall we go have a look at it? Eh? Glorious. Well, good morning. Absolutely stunning this morning, isn't it? I'm glad I stuck out all that wind and rain last night. <laughs> and I'm glad that the tent held up. Just love it when it's like this. Nice and quiet. Sun just about to peak its head. I think next time I pitch it, I'll pitch these guy lines here, more to the front, and those ones to the back. And that should just take that sag out of there. But yeah, it's done well. Nice, isn't it? Anyway, that's it from me. I'll leave you with this.